the magnificent Jeff and Greg the Great are here. I don't know why I did that. I guess I'm I just did. nervous. <laughs> oh my well, god. <laughs> What a great Who's podcasting. <laughs> We're doing a podcast. <laughs> what a great way to get started. Well, I'm mm-hmm. Jeff, and this is Greg. I am and Greg. Welcome, yeah. And welcome to your podcast. My podcast, your podcast. Our podcast. Our. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if we, get, if we get divorced, I get half the first thing, right? That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Well, there has been banter, there has been talk, there has been rumor. Uh, there's a lot of people been working behind the scenes trying to convince Greg and I that there was still an audience that cared or wanted to hear what we had to say about things. And so Thank now we ignored them and decided to do this anyway. <laughs> Ignore all the songs. It's any true has been. You know, as we always say, the, the freaking frack money only goes so far. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> ran on that, ran out on that long time ago. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. I, um, you know, it's kind of a miracle that, that this is happening in and of itself because I wouldn't say that, that I'm the most tech savvy guy in the world. Uh, it's not that I'm not capable of it. I just don't care about it that much. <laughs> I don't know if you fall in that category or not. Or you just, well, no, just... well, actually, actually, uh, on my end, I'm uh, I'm actually doing this podcast uh, via rotary phone. So I don't know if that tech savvy or not. Oh, so you you gave up the telegraph finally? I see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am a Gen Xer, so yes, I did. God, I'm gonna save a fortune in tape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe like five percent of the people that listen to this will even understand that. But. <laughs> we just we just told our age. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, did she, we think we told our grandparents' age. <laughs> mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, Greg. I, I, you know, they told us to just be honest and truthful in this, but I'm a, a little bit agitated today. Um, and I, I know we've talked a little bit about my, my property and everything, but uh, something happened today. I can't mention any names or anything or get into too much detail, but uh, my maintenance supervisor is leaving on Friday with that little bit of notice. That's really going to stink. <laughs> he, says, he says as he's unclogging the toilet from the front of the you know. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I'm not above just getting underneath a seat, but you know, I mean, that the odds of me having a replacement in there by Monday. I mean, what do you think the odds of that happening on the what? Uh, about, that is much as you know, this over under that I'm following on my gambling app from hitting. It, it, these people need to stop going running so I can get the ticket. So. Yeah, you can't rely on the bullpen. Ever. Mm-mm. Anybody's bullpen in this day and time. So, Mr. Greg, what do you foresee from this forecast? What are our, what is our audience going to be listening to? What do you think they're going to be hearing? Ah, uh, um, at first, probably a lot of uh, nervous laughter uh, because we're broadcasting and we're not just basically, you know, the privacy, quote unquote, of our cell phones and talking to each other and privacy that no one else can hear. And then we'll probably loosen up a little bit and, uh, you know, start to let them, the audience know who we really are. And then we'll discuss them by showing the inner layers of, you know, deep inside the air and, and just let that flow a little bit. I, that too dark? I think that was too dark. Did no, I just go too much on that? <laughs> Save it for your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> my manual my manual is fifty shades of gray. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I thought that was your hair. No. 
Oh, 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 wow. I gave yeah. up on that a few months ago. I remember when um, we were younger and hanging around, and I said, you can't wear a hat all the time like that. You're going to lose your hair. And you said oh. you were going to lose it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I, I mean, it's one of those things where probably, but when I was in college, I had the wild hair up my ass just to see what it, I just shaved my hair just to see what it would look like, just to see what, you know, just, just to see what it would be. And when I did that, I was actually working as a photographer for the yearbook and I went down and covered uh, one of our football games and it was overcast. But as we all know that even if it's overcast, you'd be like silver screen. And my dumbass not only did not wear a hat, I didn't have the forethought of putting on sunscreen. <laughs> so after four hours of running up and down the sideline, taking pictures and you know, doing doing that, I stepped in the shower and felt like Somebody had put kerosene on top of me and lit the match. And I, I kid you not, my, you know, the whole top of my head was blistered. I mean, just flat out blistered. And that's nice. It was. Husband, and, and, and that's the way it is. I, I, wearing a hat was uncomfortable, but if I didn't, then the air would hit it and it was tight. Let's just say that probably put the final nail in the coffin to uh to my long flowing rock of hair. <laughs> so, I mean, like, now I feel bad for even bringing it up. It's almost like a medical condition. <laughs> not that it's not, but well, no, nonetheless. <laughs> it, well, here's the thing, it was my dumb ass. It, you know, my dumb ass did this and you know, in the in my youth. And now, granted, I, I probably would have lost it anyway, but that just accelerated. After that, it was slowly and surely that male pattern ball was coming in. And yeah, I kept it for a little while, and you know, I never went so far as to comb over, but uh, after a while, you know, it's one of those things where. My haircuts, quote unquote, kept getting shorter and shorter. Instead of losing, it's like, it's short. It's basically, it was like double, and I was using flippers, and and I was just like, what the, what the hell am I doing? I just, you know what? Embrace the cue ball and go with it. And so, mm -hmm. and so that's what I've been doing here for the better part of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me personally, um, I haven't had that issue yet, but the, the grain bothered me at first. Not so much in my hair, but in my beard. Yeah. And I used it just for men in my beard for years, and I just finally gave up to it. And when I finally did give it up, I, my beard was, like, completely white at that point. So everybody knew I've been using <clears throat> just for men for, like, the last year. <laughs> so you, so you, you, quickly, you quickly went from being Gandalf the gray to Gandalf the white. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Overnight, I'll know. That's the yeah, that's the man. Like that's something I never, I never really, I never really could have break with the beard. Now, I had. It's just one of those things where, number one, it just irritates. You know, it just got to a point where I would just crack. And so I, and number two. Uh, just something about clean shaving face just feels good. And, you know, uh, not that anybody cares, but the, probably the best Christmas present that I'll ever get my wife is, is a couple, about two, three years ago. She loves beard, and she loved the beard on me. And so I said, okay, here's the thing. I'll go You're talking about my, Hillary Clinton, right? Uh, no, uh, Madeline Albert. Okay. Yeah. And he's talking about his lovely wife. Yes. And so 
What's your uh, name again? Jan. Jan. <laughs> and uh, go ahead. I think you know what? Last time I checked, it was. But um, hold that thought for a second. You know, because I have to ask you something real quick. Have you ever taken an Uber? Uh, not, not since I went to the doctor yet. But no, I have not. Like, not like, I mean, but you're you're familiar with the service. It's like a a cheaper and cleaner, cheap cab. taxi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know you can just order it up on your phone, like whenever it could be three o'clock in the morning. You want to go to Sheets? You just do it. Like the hooker in downtown. Oh yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Well, have you heard of their new service, Uber Piss? Uber Piss? Yeah. No, no I have. I have not. This this sounds innovative. Tell me, tell me more. Yeah, I'm just going to give you the lay down and the language for the people that this service is directed for. But let's just say, for example, that you've applied for a job and you've got to pass a drug screening. You with me so far? I, I am. I have uh, I danced that dance a few times. So then you just go into your iPhone or whatever you have and you pull up the Uber Piss app and you call the guy in. So the Uber tested drivers who are completely clean will come to your house, will pick you up, will take you to the uh, drug screening place, uh, drop you off, and provide you with a clean urine sample for your test. Oh. And then we'll sit there and wait for you until you're done and then take you home again. All for a nominal fee, of course, but what a convenient service. Yeah. You know, that that would be, that would be very convenient. Um, just, in, just in case, you know, you, that way you can still maintain your lifestyle and still be employed at the same time. Not have to worry. Exactly. So, you know, you don't have to worry about any vacant postal positions anymore. <laughs> you don't keep your meth habits a secret to everyone. Yeah, of course. All right. Go ahead back with your cool shave story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just, that I was, I, I was going to say. I was going to say that with a. <laughs> so I was looking at my scrotum the other day, saying, "No, I'll just." <laughs> but um, we no, I... you over. Yeah. You know, I... Well, I want my head to look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that that definitely has gone Gandalf the Gray a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. Thank God we have the not for children right now. <laughs> and this is just the beginning. And the same, well, the thing is, like, if we do video, then I can, I can, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if, be my like words, a... if my words don't paint the picture well enough, then, you know, we can always if... go to the um, video page. Well, sure, but, you know, the, it'll be like, this will be your version of that book that Madonna did. What was the name of that book? Do you remember? Um, true lies, the satanic verses. No, um, <laughs> mm. she did a picture, she did a pop up picture, book, I think. yeah. I and mean, yeah. she had a picture of her squatting over a mirror, if yeah. my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, it was a uh... <laughs> good time. And, and, Those and... were the days, <laughs> and back then that was called risque. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> now it's called a gynecologist visit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. Oh, I was thinking. You imagine how hard it would be to like FaceTime your gynecologist during the pandemic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure the resolution is right on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't be for a stare. I guess. Yeah. That's my point. Oh, do you have something that you need to say? Uh absolutely yes. Um I have absolutely nothing to say. Okay. 
you know, it's the new product, which is actually called Nothing, and it's from uh, Zilch Nada Industries. And, you know, with Nothing, you get absolutely everything you pay for. Nothing. It's kind of like an episode of Sun. Yes. <laughs> which, yeah. Which is, yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> Nothing. You pay for the TV guide to show you what's up. <laughs> Nothing. You get a, you get exactly what you pay for. Nothing. Okay. Do they have a website? Oh yeah, zilchnano.com. What fantastic sponsors we have right out of the gate. I tell you. You know how much they paid us? <laughs> what about this? Nothing. Mm. Well, you get what you pay for. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so by the way, we haven't really talked about it much, but you know, recently I I, I got back from my trip to LA. Uh, it, it really seems like forever since I've been out there. Since you got back, or no, since so we've been out since I've been out to LA. Ah. All right, yeah. top ten. No, 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 that's not under the top ten. Uh, top ten, top ten uh, moments of LA for me. Well, you know, it's kind of cool. We were visiting our daughter, and it was kind of like a family thing. And um, you know, she's been out there for so long. She's more of a Cali girl than she is a North Carolina girl now. You know what I mean? She's she's, she's just yep, yeah, and she is, and um. Yeah, we should have her on the show as a guest. She'd be fascinating, I think. By the way, we're going to have a guest. <laughs> oh, okay. I will. Right, well, uh, uh, yeah, no. later on, not tonight. <laughs> tonight, th this is just utter chaos. Anyway, top three. Uh, like, well, we did a lot of like touristy type stuff. So I guess uh, one would be my uh, hike up Runyon Canyon. Uh, conveniently enough, can only live within walking distance of the entrance of the park which was very convenient for me uh that was super cool wonderful views like panoramic views all around you can see all the way from like Malibu all the way to downtown LA from up there so that was cool um we went down to the beach and uh you know uh we just hung out at the beach and you know the shops and stuff and rode scooters and bicycles from um from Malibu, yes. from, from oh, Venice. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did, did you get a chance to frolic on the beach? We did, actually. You frolicked on the beach? Oh, uh, we did. Okay. Yep. Is there going to be a video of that? I mean, if we ever get video for the show, I'll show you some videos from us frolicking. But yeah, I mean, anytime, I mean, you know, we both grew up on the East Coast. And we're familiar with the North Carolina beaches and everything. And they're wonderful. I mean, they're world-class beaches, in my opinion. But there's nothing like that beach in L.A. I mean, just the, the size of it. I mean, it, you know, it, it, three football fields wide in places up there in Venice. But we drove bikes from um, Venice down to Santa Monica Pier and had a couple of drinks and watched the sunset. And, you know, it was just, that was super. I mean, there were so many cool things that we did. Um, I just remembered uh, one of the last nights we were there, we went to the um, um, uh, Modern Art Museum. And uh, after we got out of there, there was a live j jazz concert going on, and we watched that. And then on the way back to Kaylee's house in Hollywood, we just drove down the Sunset Strip, and uh, we ate it off. Mark Wahlberg's Pink Taco Place, right there on Sunset. Can we say uh, that? Can we say that on the podcast? I don't think he'll mind. Uh, he'll I'll, just call me and we'll edit there, There's out. no FTC when you, you there's no FTC on like fines or anything. We can say Pink Taco. No, no. no. I did. Yeah, I did want to. I didn't want to get in <laughs> trouble the very first time we do this, so I'm just like. Little uh, twelve year old female there, yeah. mm -hmm. but I thought that was that was pretty cool. What would you say was yours? 
Epcot all, trip. You you your like your most recent trip to LA. Well, my only trip was uh, a long time ago in the galaxy far far away. Um, let's see, went to LA, took a cruise around the Pacific Coast. Uh, let's see, went to Catalina Island and Ensenada, Mexico, which is a hill, first hill hole, and uh, <laughs> then back to uh, you know, San Diego, spent the weekend in Beverly Hills. Uh, I would say the top three was Catalina Island. Uh, start there and took a tour. I think it's, uh, I'm not mistaken, it's like a, a national park. And the the cliffs that overlook the Pacific Ocean were out. And I totally get what you mean by, you know, looking out over the Pacific Ocean because it was absolutely gorgeous. The view is, is breathtaking. Um, another, they had buffalo. On the island, and I'm trying to think how the hell. Number one, did they get them there? Were they always there? I don't know. They had to bring them in by ferry, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Just as a refuge. I mean, I mean, why not? I mean, yeah. nobody's gonna mess with them out there, don't no? I? But that, that always that that struck me, and, and to this day, I mean, this I took this trip like some thirty years ago, and not that's always stuck in my mind. But um. Let's see, San Diego, the, the weather was beautiful. San Diego was, I don't know when it was, the uh, beginning of uh, July. And mm -hmm. if you can imagine in the south, in the United States, mm -hmm. first week of July, uh, you know, 92 degrees and 300% humidity. But in, in Southern Cal, it was upper 70s, no humidity, mm -hmm. sunny, which was really nice, but it's like that. All the time, mm -hmm. it really is. It's like it would get warm in the days, you wear it short in the day, but almost all the time at night, you have to wear a jacket or a windbreaker. And yeah, I really dig on that kind of climate. I'm trying to think. Then the uh, other one was when I spent the weekend, I actually I had a option to stay at a hotel over the July 4th weekend in Beverly Hills and, and just taking a walk. Around Beverly Hills and down Rodeo Drive was culture shock. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, beamers and and Lamborghinis to Beverly Hills are like Hondas and Chevys here. <laughs> you know, I mean, they were everywhere. And, uh, and so it was it's like a bunch of leggings stacked on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> so down. Only the people from the South will get that reference, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Or, yeah, in, in our neck of the woods. But overall, I mean, and I would have to say, you know, it was just, you know, at the time I was, I had just turned 21 and, and, yeah, I didn't have anything, you know, open. Uh, I wasn't dating anybody or I wasn't going to school. I didn't have any, you know, complete and I was freedom. And, and I enjoyed it. It was one of those things where if I had gone with somebody, I don't think I would have had as good a time because even, even like they would have had to been around you. And this is how great marriage can be. So, <laughs> uh, no, I just, I'm. But, uh, but no, I mean, at the time, at that point in my life, um, you know, I, even if, you know, even if your, you know, your best friend goes or your wife goes or your boyfriend, girlfriend goes, somebody you care about goes, it, you, you have to compromise something right, you want to do right, for somebody else. Right. Yeah. Right. I get it. And then, and my friend is different now, but at the time, when I went, when I was about 21, it was absolutely just, I could go this way if I wanted to, I could go that way if I wanted to, if I wanted to do A, B, C, or if I wanted to do X, Y, Z. You know, I didn't, I was, and, and I don't want to use the word beholden, but, you know, I didn't have to worry or be concerned about, is this person that's with me having to or are they enjoying it as much as I? 
but that makes sense. Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, hold that thought for just a second because I need to speak to the audience here for a minute, okay? All right, we just have to do these things. We got to get them in. Guys, are you tired of the girls getting all the attention from this so-called thing called the quote-unquote menstrual cycle? Sure, they have to deal with bloating, cramps, sanitary napkins, etc. But what about the boys? Well, from the makers of Pamprin comes the first menstrual relief medication for men. Manprin. Containing the equivalent of a shot of Jack Daniels, two doses of Xanax, and a half a gram of Afghan Kush, Manfred gives the fellas everything they, need, everything they need to handle that special time of the month for all the women in their lives. Manfred, sold everywhere. Now, Greg, you've used this product, correct? I didn't realize. <laughs> well, yes, I, I just didn't realize it. I didn't know. <laughs> now granted I don't think I used them all at once but in some capacity maybe not the F maybe not the F yeah so you you use the over the counter version yes I guess <laughs> yes <laughs> oh that I'm speechless <laughs> that, 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 okay. I had I mean, them. I was like, "What was your sales today? How did you get them to be a sponsor?" That's what I want. Uh, they approached me. They approached me. Yeah, they just heard about it, and they said, "I want to be a part of that." They said the Pamprin people were all on board. They felt felt we were the perfect vehicle for their new product. Well, God bless. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> move it on. Uh, we're actually kind of running out of time for our first show, if you can believe that or not. But um, I guess we want to get one more thing in. And um, I promise everyone this has been kind of like utter chaos. 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 And that's just babbling. But, you got um, to lay off the, the man. Yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> it's, but uh, it's, maybe it's, one more thing. We'll have a set list of uh topics next time at least some discussion points so we'll have some sort of direction of discussion but uh one more thing to get in about us because we're going to be kind of a sports themed show to some degree and uh we'll talk real raw about it and uh we'll talk about everybody but obviously we're going to have our like fandom with the teams that we love so um, I know you've got one more spot to get in, Greg, before the show ends. So why don't we start by you, I guess, saying, in all of sports, who is your favorite team and why? And uh, then you can do your spot, and then I'll go. Favorite? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. at all of sports, college, pro, all, what I mean. Hey. And you can even specify, like, specific sport, sport, like if it was, let's say, Wake Forest lacrosse, you know, you could even say something like that. So just whatever you think, wh well, I guess what you would say, it's not the team you love the most, but the one that you seem to care about the most. Well, I and I will preface that by, you know, um, doing a little bit of PSA for um, as far as like suicide prevention hotline because I have it, it was a life favor to me, and I've had to use it very, very often, especially back back in the 90s because the Buffalo Bills went to four Super Bowls and didn't win one. And then the Buffalo Sabres should have won the Stanley Cup 20 years ago, and they didn't get the call. And so... I will I will mix that in with, with a PSA about a suicide hotline. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, well, I will, I'm going to combine both of those into one thing. Uh, yeah. Well, well, can I say one thing? Because you know, I know it was painful to go through, and I think our kinship in sports go a long way because we both have a tendency to like small market, lovable losers. <laughs> yeah. It can never quite. Because uh, 
Yeah, I'm a big Braves fan, and just like I've always loved the fact that like when the Braves went through that stretch when winning all those division championships, we never could win the World Series. They wouldn't start saying, "Are the Braves the Buffalo Bills for baseball?" <laughs> oh yeah, and I think Toronto won two in a row. Uh, well, at least we weren't the. I know exactly. And one of those uh, happened to be against the Braves, I think. I don't know. I, my 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 memory is a little bit foggy, and uh, now I do. I think I do want to. Yeah, the, the Phillies knocked us out before we got there. So one against us and one against the Phillies you got. But I also wanted to say I'm, I wasn't trying to make light of anybody who was actually going to be uh, a tough time for rough patch. Um, that's just my superficial way of saying I am a forest being suicidal. And that's just my way of saying I have had some stress over and over. Way to go, Greg. Not, not finishing the deal. Mm -hmm. So you would say the the Buffalo teams? Would you say, well, which one in the area? You got your Sabers, you got the Blue well, Jays, and you got well, the Bills. I mean, you got those. Is there one of those you care more about? Uh, the Bills, just because for Christ's sake, you want to four straight Super Bowls and you can't get one. Um, and that. I, if they ever do win, or if any sports team, and, and either one, the Silvers or the Bills, if they happen to win the Stanley Cup or the Super Bowl, you would be able to see the fire from, you know, three states away. I mean, I, you know, that that town would go absolutely ballistic. Um, but no, I, my mom, uh, my mother is actually born and raised in Buffalo, and so that's where my affinity to that area. Uh, sport teams coming from. Um, I love the Bills. I love the Sabres. And actually, you know, the Jays actually got to Toronto's not that far from Buffalo anyway, so I got to see the Jays game. So, uh, that's awesome. You know, the, the funny thing about it, your story of why you're, you're a favorite team, NFL team is a lot better than mine. <laughs> I mean, when I, you know, we grew up in North Carolina. We didn't have a, you know, the Panthers at the time. And like, it seemed like everybody was either a Cowboys fan or a Redskins fan. Well, oh, I'm sorry. A uh, Commanders fan. Uh, uh, cancel, sorry. cancel, cancel, cancel. Um, My bad. But at it, the time, they were called that other name. Yeah. Now, now but, Dana, uh, the thing I was, was real quick, the, at least in our area, there were more Washington fans because that was the most professional yeah. sports team. Um, mm -hmm. Now, again, if you got around Charlotte before the Panthers, then it was probably a fan. Yeah, there were some Falcons fans freaking. And, you know, a lot of people were Steelers fans back then, too. Well, there still are a lot of Steelers fans in this area for whatever reason. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, you know, if we don't have a team in our state, I'm just going to pick my own team to like. And I was watching the game when I was like about seven years old. And, Saw this crazy team with lightning bolts all over their, their, their uniforms, and I was like, "That's my team." Yeah. And it's been my team ever since. Now the four, but, but that's yeah. not not that's not the one I care about the most. Yeah. <laughs> that's just why I'm in charge. Oh, like and, and that and that's and that's okay. I like lightning. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an actual recording of Jeff as a young kid. Yeah. <laughs> I like that lightning, Daddy. <laughs> oh my goodness! But go ahead. You never tell us. Oh, you said the Bills. Yeah, the, the Bills, the uh, Buffalo Bills, the uh, Buffalo Sabers, Toronto Blue Jays. Um, I mean, there's. But here's the strangest thing about that is, is that as I grow older, and I'm a, I'm a NC State fan, and I'm a UNC fan, mm -hmm. but it seems the same as, as I grow older. My fanaticism for sport has is waning. You know, like yeah. granted, I, I still care about the Sabres and the Bills, and, and I do like Pittsburgh Steelers. I always have, and but you know, it's like it 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 just kind of the the fervor. Is it there like it was when I was in my twenties or thirties? Um, you know, 
I was just I just like to look at a you know just watch a good ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting more like that too. I, and I like a a lot of times, uh, um, you know, I'm not able to watch a game live. You know, I'll watch a recording or, you know, I'll you come in two hours late or something like that. And then I'll check the score. And if my team's not doing well, I was like, I'm not going to put myself through that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I only watch half the time if we lose. I only watch mostly when we'll win or whatever, any sport that is. But uh, was that PSA your spot? Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> Exactly. Then, like I said, I was, I was, I was, I was meshing the two together. You know. Well, we can really end on a low note because I'm going to reveal the sport that I guess that I care about the most. It's almost embarrassing to say, but a nice one. It's NC State football. Of all things. I find myself caring about the most. And uh, like all the sports I used to know, all the team would be that stat guy. I could tell you everything. And I can still do that on most of my teams. But, you know, I know that football team like in the back of my hand still to this day. <laughs> and and I, I, it drives me crazy to watch in a game. You can't be anywhere near me. And, uh, you know, and it's just like, this is so funny. And I'm probably like revealing too much information to you, but. Greg and I love to give each other a good ribbing now and then about sports. And uh, I can take it all in good nature and everything, but sometimes when State plays Carolina in football and it doesn't go well from State, and I get a text or several or multiple texts from Greg, <laughs> <laughs> I have to give myself literally 24 hours before I can respond so I can calm down where I'm being. Like, you don't tell me to go F my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably a little known fact, but yeah, it, yeah, it, it got gets me sometimes. And Greg knows it. It was like silence. It's like yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone for now. Let him absorb it a little bit more. <laughs> As it is, Boy, like, guys had enough. <laughs> After the, a state fan, I mean, do I really need to dig it in? Well, here's the thing: after after the if I, after the third text I send you, if I still haven't gotten a reply, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right now, and I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow." <laughs> I always give you a little. I might say one word, and that's it. But you know, thankfully, I haven't. You haven't texted me for a while, so. It's that? been a few years, actually. I think. Yeah, you and see, you and see. They, I mean, they, they should actually have a pretty good team again this year. And yeah, well, yeah, but no, no, yeah, they're out of the coastal. They got to play like a regular schedule, like the Atlantic does now. Yeah, and for people who happen to hear this in, you know, Omaha, Nebraska, and have no idea what we're talking about, is go watch ESPN. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out for yourselves. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, you know, for those who were calling in to hear stories about the old days, what a shock for you. Just a bunch of random bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's still, um, yeah. But uh, more we plan to be back. Yep. I um, want to give a special shout out to my son, Hunter. Harris, who is producing this show, and um, Greg, I don't even know if you're aware of this, but we're going to be on his actual uh, platform at the Q Crew. That's a at ampersand t h e the letter Q Crew. Yeah, find it's everywhere on Spotify, YouTube. It'll be everywhere. You just go to that platform at the Q Crew, and uh, where if you listen to it, you already know where it is. But you can tell your friends and family like us and subscribe. It's in your comments. Let us know what you think. Now, since we're in the bullshit. since we're in the south, is is, is Q referring to barbecue? Um. Is he going to sample I don't, and I don't, you know what? I know the story behind why that name is. And if, 
for those that don't know, my son is uh, into production and um, he has his own show called Finding New Films and some other podcasts. They do shorts and all kinds of stuff. And so we're going to be adding content to their platform while getting uh, editing, edit, editing assistance. So, uh, for, but that's one of the reasons we're getting the show launched is the, the partnership there. So, um, check out their shows and check out our shows and, uh, we'll keep plugging them out. I think we'll be coming out every Sunday. I think we come out on Sunday. If we don't come out on Sunday, I apologize. <laughs> well, and, and, and audience, I, I, I'm going to make it a mission. I promise we'll be more interesting next, uh, in the next few, next few episodes. Please Absolutely. give us a chance. Yeah. We'll be back with topics next time. Um, but I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. I want to thank my co-host, Greg. And my co-host, Mr. Jeff. You're welcome, sir. And we'll do it again next time. Lee.